Hello, I'm Nate, aka B2 Mutineer, and as part of my B tier guides, I'm going to take you through a build guide for your character, the Warden, in Dragon Age Origins. I'm making one build for each class, and today it's the Rogue's turn. I always try to come up with a different build than the companion builds for your Warden, so that they can feel unique, but I've already shown the Dexterity Archer in my Liliana build, and the Cunning Dual Wielder in my Zevron build. Looking at these two builds, however, I realized that there is a third build that would fit the Warden quite well, learning from both Rogue Companions and surpassing them in power, the Bard Assassin Dual Wielding Rogue. The main idea of this build is to become the most powerful Rogue in your party through all of the passive as well as sustained bonuses you can get. As a caveat before we begin, I use the No Starting Abilities mod which I've mentioned in my Essential Mods video. This means I get to choose all the starting skills and abilities during character creation instead of having some automatically assigned by the game. I do however keep in mind which origin has which starting abilities, so if you're playing without the mod, no worries. I will be recommending the best origin that I think works with my build, but of course you can always pick whichever origin you want, I just have one that I have to recommend for the guide. If you're playing on PC and you're comfortable modding, I highly recommend using the Dexterity Light Armor mod because it changes the stat requirement that light armors have from strength to dexterity. As a rogue, you won't have to waste points in strength anymore. Without further ado, let's get into the Bard Assassin Dual Wielding Rogue. This is a damager build, so I recommend you have at least one tank in your party to keep aggression off of you and soak up damage. The origin I recommend is the Dalish Elf, due to the fact that you start with a Dalish Leather Armor set, which is a very nice light armor to have in the early game until you can acquire one of the good ones later. As an elf, you have a bonus of plus 2 willpower and plus 2 magic, willpower for extra stamina, and magic so that healing poultices and spells are more effective on you. When creating your character, you get 5 attribute points to spend. As a rogue, you also get plus 4 dexterity, plus 2 willpower, and plus 4 cunning from choosing this class. I recommend putting 2 points in Dexterity, and then I have to diverge a bit. If you are using the Dexterity Light Armor mod, then you can put 2 points in Cunning, and then the final point in either Cunning or Dexterity. If however you aren't using the Dexterity Light Armor mod, you will need to put some points in Strength in order to be able to equip higher tier Light Armors. So for those who aren't using the mod, I recommend putting 2 points in Strength, 2 points Dexterity, and 1 point in Cunning. The Rogue Dalish Elf starts with a point in Survival and a point in Poison Making. I recommend putting your 1 skill point in Combat Training so that you can unlock Tier 1 Class and Weapon Talents. If you are using the No Starting Abilities mod, then I recommend putting 2 points in Combat Training and 1 point either in Coercion or Poison Making, depending on whether you want to use Coercion in the game or not. You'll already have Dirty Fighting unlocked by default, so for your other two points I recommend getting Deft Hands from the Rogue Tree and Dual Weapon Sweep from the Dual Weapon Tree. Dirty Fighting is a great talent which stuns pretty much any enemy who isn't immune to being stunned. It's also cheap to use in terms of stamina, so use it all the time to incapacitate enemies. Deft Hands is important in order to be able to open locked chests and doors, as otherwise you'll be missing out on potentially great loot and some extra experience as well. Dual Weapon Sweep is one of the best dual wielding talents as it does a lot of damage to enemies in a cone in front of you, so it's great to have this as soon as possible. During the Dalish Elf Origin, you have some useful items you will automatically get, as well as some you can buy or pick up. The Dalish Leather Armor set, as I mentioned, is the best out of the bunch, as you will have this equipped automatically at the start of the game, and it gives you plus 2 dexterity, plus 3 defense, and the set bonus is another plus 5 defense. You also have a chance to buy some more Dalish armor from Master Island, or to unequip your origin companions Tamlin and Fenerel to get their sets. The set is useful for a lot of characters, especially the gloves and boots which you can equip on anyone for some extra dexterity and defense in the early game. You can also unequip Meryl's Tevinter Mage Robes, as they are really good robes, especially early game. And if you want to have a good early game bow for Liliana, you can persuade Master Island to give you a Scouts Bow for free. I'm unsure if you need the point in Coercion for this, but you should be level 2 before you finish the Origin, so you can hold off on speaking to him until you've leveled up and put a point in Coercion. Otherwise, you can also purchase the Scouts Bow from him. If you want to be able to craft poisons, I recommend purchasing the 5 flasks and the 2 death roots that Master Island has. You could also pick up the death root extract he has for some ready made poison. If you do have a point in coercion, you can also speak to Ashale and convince her to tell you about your parents, which will result in her giving you a key to a chest that has the heirloom necklace in it. The amulet itself isn't amazing, it just gives plus 10% spirit resistance, but it is an extra item that you can sell, and it's useful if you want more funds to buy things from Island. 
in the elven ruins you can find a dalish leather belt in a sarcophagus it's a pretty good belt offering a bonus to combat stamina regen it's also important to know that the elven ruins contain Deventer type treasures and you could find useful runes or a saw sword when looting the containers so keep an eye out for any containers you see for attributes my general advice is to put points in dexterity and cunning you will need 24 dexterity to unlock the momentum sustained which is one of the most important abilities for this build and the rest of your points can mainly go into cunning keep in mind if you aren't using the dexterity light armor mod you will need to have a score of 20 strength in order to be able to equip the highest tier light armors you can of course get some bonus attribute points from the fade when doing the mage main quest if you find all the fonts or if you have the skip the fade mod installed which gives you all of the points without having to do all the backtracking to get them in this case you would only need to put points in strength up to 16 as you will get plus 4 strength from the fade I of course recommend maxing out combat training so that you get access to the highest tier of combat talents as well as getting useful combat bonuses. If you're interested in using persuasion and intimidation, you can put some points in coercion in the early game. If you're a rogue, you get a skill point every two levels instead of every three levels like the other classes, so you'll have more skill points to work with. You can absolutely put points in coercion. Other than these two skills, if you're interested in crafting poisons and grenades, you could put extra points in poison making, though you could also just max out the skill on either Liliana or Zevron. You can just make them craft you the higher tier poisons you want to use, because you only need one rank in poison making to be able to use poisons and grenades of any tier. From my other guides, you already know I'm not the biggest fan of stealing, especially if you aren't using any mods to improve it, but since you have high cunning that will help you succeed at stealing more easily, you could invest in it if you want to. After you get all the skills you want, you can put all the rest of your points into survival for the extra nature resistance. Also, being able to see enemies on the map is decently useful if you want to plan for a more difficult fight. Here are the important talents we're interested in. I'll discuss the specialization talents in the specializations category later. From the rogue tree, you're interested in unlocking combat movement, coup de grace, lethality, and the whole deft hands row. Combat movement grants you a wider angle to perform backstabs with. Coup de grace is an absolute must for any dual wielding rogue as it grants you automatic backstabs whenever the target is incapacitated, aka stunned, frozen, or paralyzed. I recommend unlocking this as soon as it becomes available at level 8 because it will make combat a lot easier for you. Lethality is also super important as it adds plus 10% melee crit chance as well as using your cunning score if it is higher than your strength as a damage modifier. From the dual weapon talents, here are the good ones. Dual weapon training, dual weapon finesse, then riposte, and momentum. The first two dual weapon passives are really good, offering bonuses related to dual wielding. Dual weapon training grants an additional 25% attribute bonus to the offhand weapon, essentially making the offhand have the same attribute bonus as the main hand weapon. Dual Weapon Finesse grants plus 5 attack and defense when wielding two weapons. Riposte is one of the best dual weapon talents because it has a chance to stun the target, and you want to use anything that can incapacitate enemies, especially once you have Coup de Grasse unlocked, in order to be able to easily backstab them and do tons of damage. Last but certainly not least is Momentum. This is an amazing sustained talent that increases your attack speed significantly. Faster attacks equal more DPS, which is exactly what you want. This is one of the most important talents of the build, so be sure to unlock it as soon as you can. You will have to unlock Flurry in order to get this, which sucks, but it is worth it. In terms of specializations, I've already mentioned that you want to unlock Bard and Assassin, learning from both Liliana and Zevran, to become an absolute powerhouse. But there's actually a specific order I recommend unlocking this in, and that is unlocking Bard at level 7, and then unlocking Assassin at level 14. This is due to the fact that the first bard ability, Song of Valor, is quite useful earlier in the game when your party may have some mana and stamina regeneration problems, but also because the third ability, Song of Courage, the one I will be recommending you have sustained all the time, is available to unlock at level 10. In contrast, you can only get Exploit Weakness, the second assassin ability, at level 12. So clearly, the assassin specialization was built to be a more late game focused specialization. With that out of the way, here are the specialization talents you're interested in. From the Bard Tree, the first three talents, Song of Valor, Distraction, and Song of Courage. Song of Valor is useful early game because it grants the entire party a bonus to mana or stamina regen based on the Bard's cunning score. You will be replacing this later with Song of Courage, but until you have that, this is great. Distraction can disorient a creature. This is useful to use in a situation where your warden has drawn the aggression of an enemy 
you're quite squishy, so you don't really want to be attacked, which is why in addition to having a tank who will draw out most of the aggression, it's important to have disengage options such as distraction, dirty fighting, and repost, things that can somehow incapacitate a creature to allow you to either run away or backstab them to death. Song of Courage is the best bard ability, as it grants the whole party bonuses to attack, damage, and critical chance based on the bard's cunning score. And even just the base bonuses without any extra points from cunning are pretty good, plus 3 attack, plus 2 damage, and plus 3% critical chance. Of course, since you'll be putting quite a lot of points into cunning, these numbers will go higher, so it'll be even better. From the assassin tree, I recommend getting the entire tree. Mark of Death is a powerful taunt which marks a target, making it take 20% more damage from all sources of damage, including spells. This is great to use on elites or bosses. Exploit Weakness is a passive that grants your backstabs additional damage based on your cunning score. Lacerate is a passive that makes backstabs do extra bleeding damage over time if the backstab in question does more than 10 points of damage. Feast of the Fallen grants you some stamina whenever you kill an enemy with a backstab specifically. In general, you're looking for gear that has bonuses to cunning. This will increase your damage once you have lethality unlocked, and increases the bonuses of many of your talents. Dexterity is a good secondary stat to look for, as it will increase your attack and defense. The other important stats are critical slash backstab damage, armor penetration, and a bit of stamina regeneration. As always, a small disclaimer, I like to only recommend items that you can use for at least a good portion of the game, so I don't recommend items that you get during or after the lands meet. I also don't recommend any items that are particularly difficult to obtain, either because they are extremely expensive or a rare drop, or because it involves doing an annoying or difficult side quest. I also mostly stay away from recommending a lot of the super overpowered and contested items, though I do mention them occasionally where the build would really benefit from such an item. For weapons, you want daggers. They have dexterity requirements and not strength like other weapons, and they have high armor penetration and generally better bonuses for your rogue. Here are some good early game daggers. Thorn of the Dead Gods, the tier 2 version, has plus 2 damage and plus 2 armor penetration. It can be purchased from Barlin in the Lothering Tavern. Another decent pickup is Olaf's Prized Cheese Knife, which has plus 1 armor penetration and 2 rune slots. It can be looted from Hanleith Village from the Stone Prisoner DLC. The Crow Dagger is also pretty good, granting plus 15% critical or backstab damage. You can buy it from Caesar in Denerim or Alamar in Dustdown and Orzammar. Zevran comes equipped with it, and it can also be looted from various places. At higher tiers, it can have rune slots. For the mid and late game, I have 4 recommendations. The Edge is a DLC dagger that grants plus 5 damage, plus 3% crit strike chance, plus 4 attack, and it has 2 rune slots. Due to its huge bonus, the damage it deals is equivalent to a high tier longsword, so in terms of raw damage, the Edge is the best dagger. I use this all throughout the game so that I don't have to pay the huge amount of money that the Rose's Thorn costs. Speaking of, the Rose's Thorn is the best dagger in the game, but it's also incredibly expensive, costing 148 gold. It grants plus 2 dexterity, combat health regen, plus 3 damage, plus 5% melee crit chance, and plus 30% critical or backstab damage, and it has 3 rune slots. It can be purchased from Garen in the Orzammar commons, but I don't recommend this dagger because it's just too expensive, and I don't like items that are so overpowered that basically everything else is trash. The tier 6 version of Thorn of the Dead Gods can be obtained from the Drifter's Cache quest in the Deep Roads, and it's a good late game dagger with plus 3 damage and plus 3 armor penetration, as well as 2 rune slots. Finally, another favorite dagger of mine is the Dead Tyke Shanker, offering plus 5 cunning, plus 0.5 armor penetration, plus 6 attack, it interrupts spellcasting, and it has 2 rune slots. It can be acquired from the DLC area Kadash Taig that you get access to if you finish the Dwarven quest and have Shale in your party. In terms of armor, you're only interested in light armor so that you minimize the amount of points you have to spend in strength. The best light chess pieces are always the same. Battle Dress of the Provocateur is the best, being a DLC item you receive from completing an achievement in the Liliana Song DLC. It grants plus 4 dexterity, plus 5 armor, plus 15% dodge chance, combat stamina regen, and plus 50 stamina. Even though you need to do an achievement in a DLC to get this, I do highly recommend playing the Liliana Song DLC, so I still recommend this chess piece. The Felon's Coat is the best base game chess piece, granting plus 6 dexterity, plus 9 defense, plus 4 armor, combat stamina regen, and plus 15 physical resistance. It can be purchased from Heren in Denrim after 3 main quests have been completed, but make sure to only commission 1 set of Dragescale armor from Wade if you want to buy this, and wait until you get Heren's replenished stock, because if you commission the second Drakeskill armor from Wade, Heren will refuse to trade with you.
Finally, Shadow of the Empire is a decent option, granting plus 2 strength, plus 2 dexterity, and combat stamina regen. It can be purchased from Lignar in the Orzammar commons. However, instead of Shadow of the Empire, I would rather recommend Wade's Superior Drakeskin set, which is obtained by commissioning the second Drakescale armor from Wade. The whole set grants plus 4 dexterity, plus 70% fire resistance, and the set bonuses are plus 5 defense and minus 10% fatigue. Remember, of course, for the early game, that the Dalish armor set is the best. If you want higher tier versions, you can get some from Elven Loot in the Brazilian Forest, or by purchasing some from Varathorn in the Dalish Camp. If you aren't using weight set, here are some good gloves. Backhands grant plus 10% critical or backstab damage, and can be purchased from Alimar in Dustdown and Orzammar. Kunari Siege Gauntlets grant plus 1.5 armor penetration, and can be looted from the High Dragon on the mountaintop that you gain access to during the Urn of Sacred Ashes quest. Red Jenny Seekers grant plus 15% critical or backstab damage, and are obtained as the reward for completing all of the assassinations as part of the Trial of Crows questline given by Master Ignatio in Denerim. If you aren't using White Set, here are some good boots. Bard's Dancing Shoes offer plus 6 defense and reduce hostility. They can be purchased from Bodan in the party camp. However, I only recommend using these if you are using Dane's Fixes, the mod that I've mentioned in my Essential Mods video, because the Reduce Hostility property isn't implemented in the base game, so you need the mod in order for it to work. Otherwise, the Lion's Paw is a DLC item that grants plus 1 armor, plus 10% dodge chance, and plus 10 chance to avoid missiles. Silver Hammer's Tech Masters grant plus 2 dexterity and can be purchased from Bodan in the party camp. Finally, in terms of helmets, I recommend one of these two. Long Runner's Cap grants combat stamina regen and can be looted as part of the Jammer's Stash quest in the Carta Hideout in Orzammar or dropped by Jarvia also in the Carta Hideout. Quick Silver Arming Cap grants plus 2 cunning and can be purchased from Legnar in the Orzammar commons. Until you get one of these, you can use whichever light helmet you want for a bit of extra armor. On to accessories. In terms of belts, the Dalish Leather Belt or Dalish Hunter's Belt is actually a good early game option as well as a late game option due to offering bonuses to combat stamina regen. You get the Dalish Leather Belt in the Sarcophagus during the Dalish Elf Origin, and you can purchase the Dalish Hunter's Belt from Bodan in the Party Camp. Otherwise, in my opinion, the best belt for this build is the Guildmaster's Belt, a DLC item that grants plus 3 cunning and plus 5% dodge chance. Amulets are generally more defensive in nature, but we need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the high regard of House Dace. This is an extremely overpowered, absolutely broken item that grants plus 6 cunning, plus 7% melee crit chance, combat stamina regen, plus 50 stamina, and plus 30 chance to avoid missiles. This is the best amulet, hands down, for a build like this, but it also requires you to complete a very difficult achievement in the Golems of Amgarak DLC which is why I don't usually recommend it in my builds. If you have it unlocked, then you can absolutely go ahead and use it, but I will assume that most people looking for a guide don't have this amulet unlocked. In that case, in terms of amulets, we're going to be looking for something more balanced or defensive. I like using Pearl of the Anointed, which is a DLC item that grants plus one to all attributes if I know that my tank is doing their job. It gives you a little bit of everything, so it's the balanced option. For defensive stats, I recommend either the Mark of Vigilance amulet, a DLC item that grants plus six defense, plus two spell resistance, and plus five mental resistance, or the Magister's Shield, which grants plus six defense, plus 12 defense against missiles, plus four percent spell resistance, and minus 10 percent nature resistance. It can be looted from the deserted building in Denrim during the last request side quest. Next up, rings. The Wicked Oath is an amazing ring for melee damagers, particularly dual-wielding rogues and two-handed warriors. It's a DLC item that grants plus 10% critical or backstab damage, plus 1 armor penetration, and bonus combat stamina regen. The Dusk Ring grants plus 3 cunning and minus 1 strength. Be sure to equip anything with a strength requirement before you equip this ring, in case the ring takes your strength below the requirement. It can be looted in the West Brazilian Forest in a chest near the abandoned campsite. The Harvest Festival Ring grants plus 2 to strength and dexterity, and plus 4 to attack, and can be looted from the DLC area Honleith. Ring of the Warrior grants plus 2 strength and plus 2 dexterity, and is found at the end of the Drifter's Cash quest in the Deep Roads. Finally, the Lucky Stone is a DLC item that grants plus 1 to all attributes. Of course, if we're talking about bonuses to all attributes, the Key to the City Ring is better, as it grants plus 2 to all attributes, but it is a contested item that pretty much everyone in your party is happy to use. It can be obtained by completing the secret quest, the Key to the City, in Orzammar.
Next up, runes. For this build to really shine, once you unlock coup de grace and are able to backstab stunned or paralyzed targets, I highly recommend adding paralyzed runes to your daggers. One in each dagger should suffice. You can get a Grandmaster paralyzed rune by looting one from Colgrim during the Urn of Sacred Ashes quest, or purchase one from the Wonders of Theta's shop in Denrim. You can also purchase an expert paralyzed rune from the Wonders of Theta's shop in Denrim. Once you have a paralyzed rune in each dagger, I recommend getting some damaging runes for the rest of your rune slots. I think fire and lightning are the best. Fire is good against darkspawn, undead, and sylvans, and you'll fight a lot of darkspawn as well as undead, and lightning is useful against enemies who are resistant to fire. Cold runes aren't necessary in my opinion, as other than spiders, most enemies don't tend to have cold vulnerabilities, and plenty of enemies have cold resistances. We need to discuss poisons a bit. In the base game, I believe you can just use any number of poisons you want at the same time on your weapons, which I personally don't like as the game clearly states you can only use one poison at a time. It honestly breaks the game to just spam all your poisons together and it's unintended behavior. I believe Dane's Fixes takes care of this bug and correctly only allows you to use one poison. Taking this into consideration, I'm going to recommend that you focus on a poison that can stun to help you with your backstabs, because otherwise most poisons add nature damage, which is the most resisted damage type. Here are the poisons that give you a chance to stun the enemy. Deathroot and Concentrated Deathroot Extract, Crow and Concentrated Crow Poison, and Flesh Rot. This build is fairly straightforward to play. In terms of sustained abilities, you want to have Song of Courage and Momentum active. Before you unlock Song of Courage, you can of course keep Song of Valor active for the mana and stamina regen. The main idea is to find ways to backstab your foes, either by positioning yourself behind them while they're busy attacking someone else, or by incapacitating them once you have Coup de Grasse so that you can backstab them while they're incapacitated. The talents you'll be using to do this are Dirty Fighting and Repost. Of course, the Paralyzed Runes should also help, and I highly recommend having a Mage in your party to help you with Stun or Paralyze effects, with spells like Mind Blast, Winter's Grasp, Cone of Cold, Petrify, Paralyze. The Mage is also useful for healing purposes and for a weapon enchantment like Flame Weapons or Frost Weapons. Other than backstabbing enemies, you also want to make good use of your damaging abilities like dual weapon sweep and repost, as well as utilizing Mark of Death on high priority, tanky enemies so that the whole party can deal more damage to them. Prioritize enemy spellcasters as they can ruin a fight if left to their own devices, and then the next high priority targets are elites and bosses, aka yellow and orange named enemies. Make sure your tank has Threaten active and is ideally also taunting enemies often so that you're free to wreak havoc without getting attacked. Other than a tank and a mage, you can have whatever other fourth party member you'd like. Personally, I don't recommend having a second dual wielding rogue because it's quite a squishy build and it's also harder to manage as well as requiring some of the same items. Having an archer, a second mage, or a warrior, either a tank or a damager, should feel a lot better. In conclusion, the Bard Assassin Rogue is in my opinion the best rogue damaging build fit for your warden. We took the best parts of Laliana and Zevron and reached new heights, making this build significantly different from the companion builds I made for these two. I hope you enjoyed this build guide for your rogue warden in Dragon Age Origins. If you're looking forward to seeing more of my Dragon Age videos, as well as occasionally some videos on other RPGs, do remember to subscribe and leave a like and comment while you're at it too. This has been B-Tier Mutineer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.